Despair. He cursed the earth for spouting oil, black gold they called it, and he cursed the gods for not drying the oil wells. This poor woman wept those tears of despair. What could he look into later? Could he make alternate land available? And would the lawmakers revise the laws just to bring a bit more happiness to these unhappy wretches whom the search for oil had reduced to an animal existence? They ought to send the oil royalties to the men whose farms and land were despoiled and ruined, but the lawyers were in the pay of the oil companies, and the government people in the pay of the lawyers and the companies. So how could he look into it later? He should have told the woman to despair, to die, not to live in death. To lose one's memory is to lose all coordinates. It is to fail to navigate one's past and present. The executors of Kansira Wewa would like to maintain the impossibility of memory. This act is grafted on all of us and we ask, what type of violence is needed to destroy memory? What kind of unmercifulness will not afford the dignity of remembering? Is it possible to reclaim memory and to refuse to accept amnesia? Milan Kundera says that the struggle of humanity against power is the struggle of memory against forgetting. We cannot forget because their act is like an echo replayed by every voice ever speaks, every song sung, every product brought. It comes back over and over again and asks, what forces are these patterns? What hungers belong to you? Forgetting is an act of shame. And we're all driven mad by these symbols and our ease of forgetting. A living memorial to a man who opposed certain elements of the system. It's a project about his life, what he did in his life, what he campaigned for, what he campaigned against, which of course will involve a critique of multinationals, the role of Shell, the role of corrupt government. He was arguing for a sustainable energy policy in the world. He didn't say stop drilling for oil, he said drill responsibly. He said give the people of the, the Niger Delta what is their due. When people deliberately set out to execute a writer, a man of passion and his eight friends, I'm outraged. And I think as human beings we should be outraged. To actually destroy people's lives for profit is wrong. And I am angry. But anger alone isn't enough. We're using the beauty of the Niger Delta in a very um, specific way. You get the bright, lit up background, counterposed to the front with the beauty of the plants that we're growing and the, the, the trees. We'd like to make it as interactive as possible and with the kiosk at the back we can show slides and films and it can be opened up. So it's, it's the start of something that lots of other people could contribute to.
hopefully you, you could get schools involved in planting up the plants. We envisage Friends of the Earth getting involved for a month. To get um, local graffiti artists involved with decorating the forecourts. And I think it'll work on, on the level of, you know, just as a drive-by, sort of driving home or whatever, there'll be a message. To make sure that the deaths weren't for nothing, you have to keep their ideas alive. The Niger Delta doesn't have to be destroyed like this. There is a huge wave of resistance beginning to stand up. These massive events that have taken place in Brazil, in, in the Indian subcontinent, that are saying, no, this is wrong. You can still be angry at what they did to Ken, but that isn't really what his death's about. It's about taking his ideas forward, about creating a better world. And we want to raise the question through Ken's memorial of a sustainable world. An image promises a journey into new possibilities and dimensions of self. Why then do these images seem so strange? Why does one feel so cheated? Is it because something is being denied? We wonder why images appear so alienating. Is it because we are eclipsed when we ask, what is the real function of these things? Whose interest do they serve? Behind all of this rests a lie. What we see will never be enough because they are talking about the wrong thing. They want to blot out our deepest wish to recall. These monuments of despair have come to determine our limits and to make us fear our desires. They speak to me of things like failure and death. They are the means through which we learn our catastrophic loss. We lose our place, we lose our eyes, we lose our minds. Certain events become unbearable, unrecoverable, and we would like to bury them. But then we lose our place for dreams. I'm from Ukiti.